Welcome back. How much time do you spend inside looking down? At your phone, your iPad, your laptop? Possibly too much, right? Well, winter is coming, and that's the perfect time to get outside and look up. The nights are getting longer, meaning aurora hunting season is upon us and our massive starry Milky Way is in prime viewing position in the night sky. Tonight we're taking you stargazing with a couple of astrophotographers for a taste of what's on offer out there in our vast and visible universe. Here's Sonia Wilson. So let's see what the moon's doing. Tonight the moonrise I think is after midnight. Hopefully have clear skies so we'll be in luck, I hope. We're headed out into the dead of night via the twilight of Wellington's south coast. We set up and we wait. For the sun to set, for the earth to turn, for the stars to rise. As the Milky Way rotates down, the um, motion control will rotate with it, so it'll, it'll pan across as it rotates down and it'll give it a really nice feel. And what a prize for the patient. Welcome to the truly awe-inspiring world of astrophotographer Mark G. No, I'm, personally, I'm not religious, but I, under the night sky, it just feels like a spiritual experience for me. Like, I go out, it's, I guess it's like a natural drug. You, you get hooked and you're always chasing something better. You're always chasing that perfect shot. To go stargazing with an astrophotographer is to be reminded to take the time to look up. Because even without a camera lens, it's amazing what you can see. So those little two little clouds, they look like clouds, but they're not actually clouds. What you're looking at is dwarf galaxies. Uh, they're the, the Malamagellic Cloud. And oh, look, can you see that satellite up there? I think that's the, oh, International, wow. that's the International Space Station. <laughs> it's coming over right on cue. Look at that. It's incredible when, when you think of it, like here we are on Earth and we're, we're flying through space at the speed of a bullet. And then there's all these other objects at, at these amazing vast distances away from us and they're just right there in front of us in the night sky. It's, it's just mind-boggling the facts that go along with it, like the, the galactic centre of our Milky Way is 27,000 light years from Earth. Now that means the light that left the Milky Way's core has taken 27,000 years to get to my camera, for instance. And that's, that's a small distance compared to the rest of the universe. A visual effects artist at Wellington's Weta Digital, astrophotography is just a hobby for Mark G. He's completely self-taught, but he's been winning awards for his work the world over. A popular opinion, it's Mark G. <laughs> his profile's sky high, not just for shooting stars, but because of work like this. No special effects here. This is a real moon rising in real time over Wellington's Mount Victoria. Shot on a massive lens from another ridgeline 2.2 kilometres away. It took a year of trial and error to capture and it made Mark G an overnight sensation. When you see it just lift up above that horizon. It's like, oh my God, my heart was pumping. I'm going, oh quick, people walk onto the, onto the lookout. And, don't and knock the camera. Don't, don't, yeah, don't knock the camera. <laughs> uh, batteries don't fail me and, and everything like that. Right to the end after I'd gotten the shot, I was really worried about corrupting my memory card and things like that. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a big adrenaline rush. And then I uploaded it to the internet and went to bed. And the next day it just went viral. Six million views and counting, astronomers, academics, CNN, everyone came calling. Random strangers even wrote to tell him it had changed their outlook on life. 
what is it? <laughs> at, at first, I, I couldn't quite understand it, um, but it, it seemed like people just felt a connection between their own lives and the moonrise. And, you know, they, they put themselves in that moment of watching a moonrise, which a lot of people have never really done before. It's just incredible how many people just get so wound up in their everyday lives, you know, with technology and, and working and everything like that, and don't stop and look up. That's simply it, I think. It is indeed a powerfully beautiful thing, our night sky, and Mark G's not alone in wanting to capture it. There are growing numbers of people like him all around the country. The Night's Watch, out under the southern skies in the pitch dark for hours, shooting the moon and the stars, or waiting, hoping for the elusive southern lights, the Aurora Australis, which is our next mission too. Destination Dunedin, and our man in the know down here is Ian Griffin, former head of public outreach for NASA, current head of Otago Museum. By day, as it happens, he's been helping to build a new planetarium, but by night he's out shooting images like this. The sky here is very special, and even if you live in a city like here in Dunedin, 15 minutes drive will take you to a place that is really dark when you'll get spectacular views, and that's one of the greatest things about living in New Zealand. An Englishman totally enamoured with our Antipodean skies, this evening we're headed to his favourite aurora hunting ground on the Otago Peninsula. And again, we set up and we wait. On a secluded beach under a big southern sky, watching the tide roll in, hoping the clouds will roll away. Look at the numbers, I can see the solar wind speed is getting quite high, uh, the solar wind density is high, so that's all good signals for a, an auroral display. You know, the weather can change very quickly, so while it's cloudy now, you know, I'll stick around probably for most of the night and hopefully at some point it will clear and we'll see some aurora. So when you say most of the night, you sit here all night? Well, not if it's raining, <laughs> but um, if the sky clears, um, it's, it becomes addictive because one of the nice things about the aurora especially is you never know what you're going to see. I've never seen two identical auroral displays, and I think for me that's one of the, the things that keeps me coming out and looking at them. She can be a fickle friend, Aurora Australis, even to her most serious devotees. She didn't show her colours for us tonight, but Ian's shot plenty here before. I've only lived in New Zealand for about three years, and I've seen the lights on over 70 occasions. And if you do the maths, that's roughly once every two weeks. So you can go out and see these beautiful dancing lights in the sky that are absolutely spectacular. I'm not sure how many people actually realise how easy that is to do. That's right. And the, the, the amazing thing about the Aurora Australis is it is out there. You can see it more often than, than you might think. You need a deck chair, you need a blanket, and maybe a cup of tea or something stronger if you enjoy that. You don't need any equipment. Exactly, <laughs> you don't need the gear at all. You, you just come out here and, and you just um, look up and, and enjoy it. And if you know nothing about the night sky, no worries, just get an app. If there's a bright star up there, you want to know what it is, you can simply just click on the star. Well, so how far away is that one that we're looking at? So well, this one here is around 574 light years. So that's close. Close. That's pretty close. <laughs> it's not that far at all. It only takes us 574 years at the speed of light to get there. <laughs> yes, there's a universe of wonder above our heads and down at ground level those who stalk our nighttime landscapes are passionate about protecting their view of it because they say thanks to light pollution from our ever-expanding cities our dark skies are disappearing. We are losing the night to city lights around 80% of the world's population has never seen the Milky Way with the naked eye, which is pretty staggering, really. You know, the world's becoming, you know, so populated and light pollution is just preventing, you know, the viewing of the night sky and, and we're losing that. What should we be doing about it, do you think? I think we should be smarter with the way we light our cities. To my mind, if we do lose our connection with the night sky, maybe, you know, by building cities with more lights and more light pollution, um, I think that's a tragedy. A tragedy because sometimes simple pleasures are worth preserving. 
it's almost a spiritual thing. You, you, you start to look at the stars and you start thinking about how far away they are and how long the light has taken to traverse the distance between you and the stars. And, and from my perspective, um, that really gives you it's almost a, a humbling sense of your own smallness in this enormous big universe. And you don't have to be clever with a camera. You don't have to know the stars or the science. You just have to escape the city and look up. Yeah, go ahead, stop, look up and enjoy. You know, our, our night sky is one simple but amazing thing and it's free for all. So, you know, just get out there, just drive away from the city lights, find a dark environment and just sit down and enjoy it.